Hello and welcome back to So What If I Sew, or welcome if you're new, my name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. Um, bear with me a little bit today because I'm a bit croaky, I'm a bit breathless, um, I had a cold when we went on holiday and I've come back with a chest infection so just bear with me, I'm absolutely fine, um, I've got some antibiotics and we'll be back on usual form next week. But today I'm going to talk to you about a little project I undertook earlier this month. Uh, with one of my best friends where I decided to finally enlist some help and go through my entire wardrobe. Um, I've discussed this before and I've had a couple of previous goes on my own, <coughs> sorry, um, but something I've realised is that it's just really hard on your own. It's so hard because you justify things in a way that you don't when somebody else is there. So I found enlisting Louise's help and promising her lunch as a result um, <laughs> really helped we went through my entire wardrobe in probably about four hours maybe three or four hours um and i think oh my god what was it four bags are going or three bags um which is really good because i'll talk more about this after you see the process but i felt a bit of dissonance with my wardrobe recently um a because there's so much of it and yeah i don't feel like i want to wear any of it Secondly, because I feel like a lot of it is a style I used to wear and I just don't wear anymore. Um, but also there's elements like things don't fit me the same way. I've lost some weight in some areas, gained some weight in others. Um, and there's no point having clothes that don't fit you because realistically, like they're just staring at you. And either way, whether they're too big or too small, you feel bad because you just go like I used to look so good in that and now I don't wear it at all. Um, but it was a really good experience. I've done, we did a little time lapse of the vast majority of the process. Um, some bits we missed because of phone battery, but it should give you a little idea of how we got on. So here is, here is a sped up time lapse. You can see the process we used was get absolutely everything out. Uh, wardrobe draws everything go through every single item. Some were really easy. Some was like a, yeah, love that, keeping it, worn it loads. Some were, oh God, I just can't think. And we chucked it, like in, sorry, we threw it in a maybe pile. Some of it was, this doesn't fit me. I've not worn it in five years <laughs> with some of them. Um, and, and slash, or it doesn't fit me. I'm not gonna be that shape again. And if I am, I can buy new clothes while I am it. Um, or I can make new clothes. But it was a really interesting process. And um, I really enjoyed, I actually really enjoyed it having someone else there because it took away, you know, when you do it on your own, at some point you go and get a cup of tea and then you forget and you come back later in the day to go to bed or whatever and the bed is still covered in clothes and you're like, oh, this is endless. Whereas with a friend, it did really help. Um, and it was nice to go out for lunch. It was like lunch was a treat, which was nice. So have a watch and we'll talk about some lessons I've learned, where the clothes are going. Uh, if you can see notes here, it's because I'm a little bit off today. I wanted to make sure I covered everything I wanted to talk about. So if you can see my laptop, just bear with me. Um, yeah, I, I'm fine in the sense of like, I can do stuff, like I'm gonna go to town in a minute and post some letters and that kind of thing but I'm not sleeping very well um, and I'm coughing up a lot of phlegm, so enjoy that. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm okay, but I just want my notes next to me. So have a watch and we shall reconvene shortly. <laughs> I get asked a lot and 
I also think when people do a wardrobe clear out is where are all those clothes going? So one bag um, was of office clothes. I don't wear office smart anymore. And if I have to be office smart, I do it in, in my own way. So I've kept one smart black dress for smart events, um, important meetings, and also, frankly, funerals and anything like that. I've kept one smart, appropriate black dress that's fitted, it's tailored, I love it. So that's staying. Everything else has been donated to, oh, who is it? Dress for Success, I think. Uh, they're a London charity that uh, provide clothing for homeless and disadvantaged women who need to go for interviews and to try and get jobs and that kind of thing. So I've donated it there um, so that some people get better use out of it than me. Um, as you guys know, I have a bit of a penchant for knitwear. I love knitwear. I managed to get, I think it was, what, 20 something jumpers down to about nine. Uh, sorry, jumpers and cardigans down to about yeah eight or nine, uh, which I'm really happy with because I'll I'll actually wear them all now. Um, but the practical cosy clothes like that, um, I want to donate to a refuge. Um, there is one local to me. I'm just going to drop them an email to ask them if it's useful because they say you know inquire if you have a specific thing you're interested in donating. Um, but because we're coming up to a really rough winter, I'd rather donate again my jumpers to people who are going to get use out of them because they're perfectly fine, there's no holes, they're not threadbare or anything, they're really cosy and I want to make sure they go to people for whom they're going to get the same use out of it um, as, as I would, I just have too many. Um, the younger clothes, the going out clothes, I'm getting rid of some dresses, they're going to my local charity shop because they've got a poster outside requesting those things. Um, I think it's for Christmas dues and prom and things like that where people may not be able to afford to buy a new dress. So those kind of clothes are going there. Um, I try to be as targeted as possible when I'm donating things. But the fact that my local charity shop literally has a poster being like, do you have these things? Please donate them. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take them down there. So hopefully people get some use out of that. The only things that were properly like chucked, thrown away in the bin were old underwear and old socks that you know nothing could happen with so they've gone but it was a really really good process i've also got a new uh, bag full of things to be mended or an updated bag full of things um as well as a couple of work in progresses which is next to my chair right now um here it is so next week i'm going to do a mend with me vlog and we're going to get through a good chunk of those because they're little things like the elastic needs fixing or the edges need overlocking um one of them is a chalk and notch fringe dress i adore it just needs the sleeve securing underneath and then it's done but for some reason i'm really struggling with that so i thought put them in a bag and then i can a once the bag is full we have to get through the bag it's a nice small bag <laughs> but also um it means in a moment where I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to sew and I'm having a bit of project indecision, I could grab the bag and find something in it that I fancy doing. So we'll see how that process goes, hopefully quite well. Um, so that's kind of where all the clothes are going to. I'm gonna take one bag down with me this morning as well, depending on my breathlessness and what I can actually feasibly carry. Um, but yeah, so I have thought about where the clothes are going. This is not a mindless chuck everything in the bin. Um, I have found that I have too many things. I would rather they go to a home rather than ending up in landfill. It's a really hard thing as well because I've, I've got so much better at consuming less. But previously I consumed a lot and I don't wear any of it anymore. So it's, it's that finding that balance between rehoming things, throwing away the things that have to be thrown away, not needlessly throwing away stuff I do wear for the sake of the new wardrobe. Like it was, it's quite an ethical balance, but I think we've got there. And um, I have learned some lessons though. So again, looking this way, your style changes. It is natural. You shouldn't feel bad. You can wear something four years ago and look amazing in it. I love it. And it's a vibe. And you go to put it back on and either you don't look like you used to in it or you just don't like that style anymore. So for me, when I was at university, I used to wear a lot of shirts and skinny jeans. Um, I was really comfortable. I loved it. Big cardio at the top. Really loved shirts. But 
somewhere in the last few years I've stopped wearing them I think because a I struggle with the bust on shirts so they end up being really baggy and sort of boyfriend style um which is fine but not for your whole wardrobe for me anyway at the moment I prefer so what I'm wearing right now actually if I stand up I like a tight long sleeve top I still love my skinny jeans um and a bit cardi but I prefer what's underneath to be a bit more hugging partly because it's warmer <laughs> frankly um but then there's other things so like I don't wear skater skirts anymore nobody does um but also I used to just find them I don't know they're just not I don't like the way they look on my body. I would much rather wear really cool trousers or if I'm wearing a skirt, I'd rather it's either long or it's more of a pencil vibe or as you guys know, I love an A-line mini skirt. But skater skirts, they're much more my mum than me. So there is one I'm gonna ask her if she wants because you know it's her five. I've kept one because my mum did give it to me and I love it and I, I'm keeping it because Firstly, it's ludicrously short and it's quite fun. Um, but also there's an outfit I love that it goes with. So it's like my thigh high black boots, my skirt, a jumper quite like this. Um, or it's a jumper, this is a long sleeve top, but it's a jumper sort of this colour. Um, and it looks really cute. So that's the only one I kept. Otherwise, the skater skirts have gone. Uh, so I have a lot of the bodycon skirts of, of the old clubbing days because people don't wear them anymore. And frankly, I, I would just rather spend my night having fun rather than hoiking my skirt down because it's rolled up at every conceivable opportunity. Um, but then things like that, for example, I've discovered I love slinky clothes. Not discovered, I've always loved slinky clothes, but I found that a slinky midi dress I prefer because I don't, yeah, spend my whole night trying to pull it down. But I also quite like structured clothes. I love an A-line mini. I think it makes my legs look great and it's really comfortable and it just stays where it's put. Like, I like that. Um, I found, I love a big cardigan with something tight or slinky, I think is the word really, um, underneath. I love, I don't know, I still love my jeans. <laughs> still love my skinny jeans. Those aren't going anywhere. But I have discovered I like a wide leg trouser and I am planning, I think, I think I've decided I'm going to make a pair of wide leg Pietra trousers in burgundy denim which I think will be so cool um so yeah I think those are coming up on my horizon as well but I've just discovered that like whilst I love my traditional silhouette I'm quite slinky I also love a structure I I like pairing the two together I like a tight jumper with huge trousers like it's really fun um and it's a part of fashion I didn't know I was able to access as a shorter woman so it's it's really fun but it meant i had to say goodbye to some old favorites but things i've not worn in the bracket of five to ten years which if you've not worn it in a decade it definitely has to go if you've not worn it in five years it still has to go in my opinion or you need to remember why you like wearing it and have a six months where you try and wear it because that also helps um leading me on to my next thing honestly if you haven't worn something in over three years or i used three years because of the pandemic but realistically over two years, if you've not worn it, even if you love it, you're not going to wear it. That's the thing. You're better off giving it to someone who will wear it or realistically just, just getting rid of it in some way, whether that's donating it, whether... So my friend Louise has done quite well out of my wardrobe clearances previously because even this one, I gave her a dress I adore. I love it so much, but my boobs don't fit in it. And I have to stop lying to myself because what happens is I look at it in the wardrobe and I go oh it's so beautiful and then I try it on and I go oh it doesn't fit me anymore um and then cycle of shame so I'd rather give it to her it looks gorgeous on her she'll get loads of use out of it um I did the same with a dress I wore to a wedding a few years ago where I was like love this can't breathe in it though so it's gotta go um definitely prioritize breathing breathing and moving in a garment over it you know being being basically poured into it um it's a lovely vibe but if you can't move there's no point um so fewer clothes making makes getting dressed easier is a big lesson I've learned when you have a massive wardrobe you almost feel overwhelmed to the point of apathy whereas a smaller wardrobe I mean my wardrobe is still big by other people's standards I would say I can close my drawers now which is so exciting but it definitely, I've split it into summer and winter and summer stuff's gone away. Um, 
and it is easier to find clothes to wear it really is and it's also easier to see gaps which is lovely um but it does make getting dressed easier frankly just when you have fewer choices it makes life easier and i have fewer things but they all go together or they go better than they did previously um i'm also getting much better at not buying random navy blue things when i think they're gorgeous because the base color of my wardrobe is black um and I don't really, I love navy and then I get it home and I go, oh, nothing I own works with this. What is the point? There isn't one because also I don't like it that much wearing it day to day. It just seems fun because I don't own it. So I've got better at reminding myself why I don't own things, which is worth doing. If you struggle with that, write it down. I've got it, um, or I had it, I don't anymore because it's, it's really in there now. Um, I had a post-it saying, you don't own navy because nothing goes with it. You don't wear mum jeans because they make you look four foot six. Um, and like, I had a couple of things like that noted where I was like, this is the reason you don't buy this. Because A, you don't wear it. B, it's upsetting if your boobs don't fit in it and you feel sad. Um, you know, in the same reason, I don't shop at River Island. If I am going to shop, apart from the sort of ethical complications of fast fashion, which are numerous, River Island sizing is literally, like everybody makes up their sizing, but River Island every year seem to throw a dart at a dartboard and go, oh great, R16's now an eight or whatever it is. And it's all, it's all nonsense. But circling back, that is why I wrote down for myself again, no, long time ago saying, if you're going to go shopping, don't go into those stores because you will feel terrible afterwards. You will feel awful because you're like, I don't, I'm, and it's such a stupid thing to feel bad about. But you do when you shop on the high street and your numbers change per store and you try things on and you feel terrible and everything. It impacts your, your feeling of yourself. Even if you remember quite rightly that size is only a number and it doesn't matter as long as your clothes fit you it can be really distressing. So circling all the way back after my little fast fashion rant there, it's really important to just write down why you don't buy certain things. And then it means you don't fill your wardrobe with random rubbish, really. It's better to buy or make things that are stylish rather than fashionable. Um, so a great example of this, I have a pair of jeans that are how long have we been together six years old they are they're old new look jeans the denim is not denim anymore it's so thin it's so shiny and um, i need to get a new pair but i've kept it because i quite like the way my legs look however they're high-waisted and they have a really weird which was fashionable at the time i should say they have a really weird like four button closure here and I was wearing them the other day, like when I was going through the wardrobe with Louisa, they landed in the keep for now, but probably upgrade. Um, because, yeah, you know, they're, they're not super fashionable anymore. I'd rather have a pair of stylish jeans I can have for like five years um, or 10 years, I should say, because those have lasted six. So I looked in the mirror and was like, I look like Jessica Simpson, 2005, as in as, as a style. I, I realised that like I'm wearing pretty much the same outfit um and that doesn't work for my style anymore so i am going to upgrade those jeans um and find ones i feel as good in though that's the thing i want to i'm gonna go shopping in those jeans so i can find so i'm not mindlessly replacing i want to feel find something i feel as good in but the denim is better quality so will last longer and they have a normal like a closure like this um now i should say um, I'll still be getting high waisted um, jeans because I'm not insane. Um, but the jeans I'm wearing now are lovely, but they're slightly cropped. So in the winter, they get really cold ankles. Um, but these other ones are like the whole length of my leg. So that's what I want. I just want something that goes the whole length of me, whereas these are a bit more summery. Um, so yeah, just FYI, because if you're like, you're wearing jeans now and they're fine. Um, I need something slightly longer for the winter. Um, so the other and final lesson i have learned is that if you are doing a wardrobe clear out as i discussed at the beginning get someone to help you whether it's a friend me and my mum have talked about doing a wardrobe clear out for her with me on facetime because i won't be going out to Orkney. um so you know just having someone else there as a frame of reference someone that ideally 
you're quite close to so that they can give you their honest opinion because that's Louisa does a great thing I don't know if she watches these vlogs but if you do you do a great thing where she she's such an enabler in some circumstances but when we were doing this it's not that she would be like that looks terrible I'd hold something up and I'd be like oh I love this and your face her face is an absolute picture where it just goes mm. and she doesn't say anything but I look at it and go, I've got to get rid of it, don't you? Don't I? And she goes, yeah, yeah, you do. Um, and I love it because I needed somebody there who was going to look at me like that, who was going to go, do, do you though? Do you really wear it? Do you need it? And that was really helpful. So enlist somebody for whom you are close, you know, get a packet of biscuits, make some tea um, and really make a day of it and just, just lean in. Um, be ruthless because a it means you have more clothes you love which means you feel better about yourself because you're like yeah I look beautiful and everything I own um, but also it allows you to highlight gaps so if you do want to make something new you can go oh I really want this I'm gonna have a go at making it or like me I discovered I was like I have a lovely short black cardigan my true bias Marlowe I need a big slouchy black one so I bought this one because I couldn't find a pattern that Basically, I broke so many needles making my Marlow. I love it. I'm not doing it again for the foreseeable until I've sort of plucked up the garage. Um, so I bought this one, but it's the kind of thing that will last me forever. So that's fine. I'm really careful with my wool and my knitwear. I do special knitwear washes. Like, um, it's something I know I will have for a long time. So I bought a black cardigan and a slouchy white one. So now I don't need any more because I have all of the colours that I would need in the styles I would need. And it's, it's things like that where I went, I know this is a conscious decision to buy something I'm going to have for a long time. So it was worth doing. Louisa also came with me shopping for those things. Um, the only thing I think was outstanding on my list is I really need a new belt. Sorry, not a new belt, an additional belt and one that does up traditionally. Because my one is a little sort of stud belt and the stud sort of presses into my stomach uncomfortably if I'm wearing it with a thin dress. So I just need another belt. Um, but it was really, really useful to just have a second pair of eyes. So what's next for the Great Wardrobe Audit? Two things. Shoes. I need to go through my shoes. Um, I have beautiful, beautiful going out shoes. But my day-to-day -day shoes, I really, really need to look at properly. Because I'm getting problems with my feet. So I need to make sure I have enough shoes that I'm not wearing the same pair every day. Because that's bad for your feet. Um, but also that I have shoes that don't disintegrate. That my feet don't get soaked in. You know, like making sure I have the right shoes for the type of work I do and the type of life I live as well. Um, again, your styles change, but also the work you do changes. And for me, I need something with a little bit more support for my feet. The other thing is I'm going to focus on making things for me. So one of my original goals when I started sewing was to make myself really nice workwear because I was struggling to find it anywhere. I was struggling to find things that I felt smart in, but comfortable and felt like me. So I've done that. I have a fantastic work wardrobe now. I love it. But I don't have enough clothes for, for me. So part of that is I want to make some True Bias Hudson pants. I've got some cosy sweatshirt sort of material. Um, and I've got something to sort of cuddle up in in the winter that's that's made by me and like I would like to look at some jumpers, but also I just want to look at making some clothes where if I, if Adam, you know, and I go out for dinner, I've got something me made to wear. Or if we go to the cinema or a picnic or a big walk, I've got something cosy that's me. Um, and I don't know, that just, I don't want to think all of my sewing is only work appropriate. I want to have things where if we get invited to go to a museum or out for lunch or to the film or whatever, that I've got something to wear, um, because that's still a struggle area. So I'm going to have a sit and plan properly and see what I want to make. Um, I've got a couple of bits in mind, but I'm trying not to rush. I'm trying to see what, what I like wearing. I'm almost going to like document my wardrobe for like a few weeks and see what I wear in my personal time and then see if I can, like if there's anything I wish I had or like, that I enjoy that I'd like more of so stay tuned I'll do something about that later in the year and my make nine next year might reflect that as well so we shall see
Anyway, thank you so much for watching everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to give it a little like below and maybe even subscribe if you don't subscribe already um, to hear more from me. I have a blog, which I'm trying to write on more, but fairly miserably, um, which is linked in my bio and I'm over on Instagram if you don't follow me as well. Uh, come and see me. It's a lot of styling my me maids and talking about stuff I'm making, showing you my makes and generally lots and lots of sewing chat. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, comments, queries, anything, just want to tell me how much you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week for a bit of hands-on mending. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.